All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Car Talk. I'm Ryan, joined as always by Tyler and Lou. And today we have a full episode just before the holidays. So we are going to get right into today's episode with what is on your mind. Both of these guys look puzzled and look like they have something to say. But Lou, we'll start with you first. What's on your mind? Okay, I have a couple things on my mind. One of them was I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a Tyler today. One of them mm. was uh, one of them was that I came to the office today anticipating that I could film with Tyler. That didn't work out, so that's an L. <laughs> that was the whole reason I came here today. That's an L. We're, we're literally on the same office floor, just in different rooms, but we literally only are field. both here because we thought we were gonna sit next to each other. <laughs> literally the exact reason I came. <laughs> All right, so there's that. <laughs> um, and then the other thing was I think. There's a very important football game coming this this weekend. Oh my goodness! I would call it the biggest game for Michigan in the last. Is Lou allowed to be a fan again this week? I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. All right, you don't want not the, the one week fandom. <laughs> he said this is not fandom. Okay, I, this is not fandom. I do want Ohio State to lose. I hate Ohio State. This is macro sports chatter. Yeah, this is a huge game. No, it am is. I wrong about it that? Is. No, it yeah, is. It is. It is. It's this big. is for the playoff. It's big. I mean, and my the dad. And my Ohio dad. It's going to win by twenty, but go. That's probably true. My dad wanted me to make sure that Ryan knew that Ohio State is trash. So I'm going to put that out there for everybody. Shout out to my dad. Lou, did your dad know what the score was of the Michigan versus Michigan State game, and then the Ohio State versus Michigan State game? Yeah, listen, we're a Georgia family, as I've said repeatedly. I just don't know and why your dad keeps bringing up the Michigan, like Ohio State's trash thing, when he, you guys are, you know, not Michigan fans. It's just a thought that comes into mind. It's like when you see fact in front of you, you have to say it out loud. (laughs) I saw something. This is just brief college football. I saw something that FEI rankings I follow a lot, like advanced stats, whatever. There's a bigger gap between the number one team and the number five team, which I believe was like Georgia to Cincinnati, than there is between number five and number 70. That makes sense. It's really Georgia, Ohio State, than everybody else, right? Pretty much. Alabama's, Alabama's pretty close. Yeah, I think Georgia, why it's going to be a real <laughs> shame when Michigan wins this weekend. Okay, uh, don't see it, but that's it. That's what's on your mind, though. Um, yeah, and if anyone knows anything about antique pianos, hit me up. I saw I that tweet. That. They're hard nowadays because they're a bitch to move. Yes, and a lot of times, like nice piano, there's not in style anymore. Correct. We tried to no move one wants ours, a piano in their house anymore, and pretty much it was like. They like broke the thing on the way out. Yeah, and it's very hard to identify what it is when it was made. So I'm in the blender of learning about antique pianos in the last 24 hours. So if anyone knows any information, hit me up. You got this. You got a Steinway, right? No, it's called like a Stife or something. Ah, uh, yeah. It was made um, in like 1910. So Ty, what's on your mind? True vintage. Maybe there's an Allen yeah. Ginter card to be had. It's very um, vintage. I what's on my mind? Sunday, I didn't watch an, a lick of football, but I was aware of what was happening based upon my Twitter mentions. <laughs> Supposedly, my quarterback was awful. Awful. And I heard about it. I also heard that ESPN put him as a top 10 quarterback going into that game. Um, And look, there was a time not too long ago that we did a bit about a panic meter around Patrick Mahomes. So I still feel good. My quarterback's still in three, and I'm feeling okay, decently, somewhat able to stomach the fact that I have them going into the Super Bowl, but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Next, my other guy on the hardwood. Real shot. He's finished. <laughs> but we'll keep going. What? What happened? Michael, Michael you, you, Porter did Jr.? The, you did not see oh. the news about MPJ. I was I waiting. He, he might be done for the year. You're, no, for that's so hard to believe. Nerve damage in his back. Nerve damage in no. his back. It's Bro, they bad. maxed him out in September. And he, wait. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. You're saying he has a back injury? Nerve damage. I could have you, never seen that coming. You should have seen it's my surprise surprise Shocking, face. right? I know. I. Wow. All right, man's got his money. Wow. Hey, listen, I'll put it this way. Anyone that wants to flame me for Michael Porter Jr., come to my Twitter, flame me, and then I'll redirect you to the general manager of the Denver Nuggets, who is at the pinnacle of what you could be as a general manager in sports, who gave the dude a max contract, 
and I'll say, cool, go talk to that guy because we were on the same page at one point and he had to decide to give him the contract, not me. So that's <laughs> that. I'll put a pin in that one. No more questions asked about those two players. The Another Denver Nuggets is the pinnacle of GMing. <laughs> I mean, if you get to be a GM of a sport, sports franchise, like especially you, the Nuggets, you've pretty Everyone much made says it. That. I mean, he built a fantastic squad that made it to the conference, conference he did. finals. He did. That's true. And then he might have made the worst decision in all of sports ever, but we'll we'll, we'll see about that. Um, another thing that's on my mind: these. Uh, I didn't really dig in, but uh, football prism NFTs Panini rolled out this past week. I just saw some buzz and chatter. That's all I got. I just wanted to throw that out there. I saw that they rolled out uh, NFL mm -hmm. NFTs. Yep. Um, that weekend, that game this weekend is definitely big. Connor McDavid is on my mind. Connor McDavid's on my mind mainly because I had a moment. I had a pocket to execute. We talked about it on this show. I went down to Dallas. The week, the last Dallas trip, I bought one card, and it was that Connor McDavid card. Mm -hmm. And goodbye. I just wish I bought more. <laughs> I mean, there's like ESPN.com, like he's the most dominant athlete in all of sports right now. That's what Lou the always next says. great Trust one. Trust your intuition. Trust your intuition. And so that's what I'm spending a lot of time on right now is trying to trust my intuition more. <laughs> But Ty, but like, let's, we should have a real moment here with you, brother, like, like an <laughs> intervention that like your intuition kind of stinks. Explain. No, it's explain. 50, 50. Explain, okay. explain about it stinking. Ryan my intuition, Tannehill. Ryan, Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill. Great time, time out. Ryan you. Tannehill. Okay. If we want to be State real. Going to the playoff. You're just being, you're being over the top. My intuition, Ryan Tannehill. Is he did ESPN not put him as a top ten quarterback on him when I made the call he was nowhere to be found? Do you think that was also, a fantasy? So I also off of one game, like off of one game, you're gonna take this away. And then two, Michael Porter Jr., my intuition when I was saying he was something and everyone was saying he was dead, mm -hmm. then went on to get a max contract. So like if my intuition's fucked up, I'm okay with my intuition being Yeah, okay, what about Tyler Hero? Wait, pause. What Can about pause him? one second? Yeah. Ryan Tannehill, that conversation. Ryan really put us in a pretzel. That conversation started with top 16 and then he changed it to top 10. That's my point. That's my point. So the and point of the conversation was top 16. Back. Yeah, Agreed. which I won. At this and point, you yes. think he's still top 16? Oh One bad God. game shouldn't change anything. But like, maybe I, I, I do I feel comfortable being the Jay Ryan Tannehill guy? No. Do I feel good about being the Ryan Tannehill guy? No. All right, we can leave it at that. Uh, I don't know where else this was going, but wow, good job, Jay. Yeah, Jay really just killed me, but that's okay. I can live with that. He said Tyler responded to my comment about being top sixteen and said he's not top sixteen; he's top ten. That was a little bit oh, of a jump. And then top. Tyler Hero, like, yeah, six man Tyler of the year. Hero is a six man. Might not be six man of the year because you know who might be not Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen. Well, if we're going on your basketball takes in the last few weeks Grayson Allen needs to get in the bubble and not leave it because he might be in some trouble injury wise is he what happened I don't just based on guys you like are falling apart at the seams oh got it you're saying he's finished yeah no, I think I got my favorite tweet the other day someone tweeted I picked up uh Grayson Allen in fantasy basketball I saw that <laughs> I was so, pumped. so that's what's on my mind yeah so really uh the Ryan Tannehill thing's definitely on my mind. Ty says, you know, hey, this dude's a stud. Like, we can end this conversation. Then my man throws four interception. And do they lose? Do they lose yeah, they to the lost Texans? Yeah. They've lost to the Jets and the Texans this year. It's very strange. Terrible. They're a weird team. Terrible. But that's neither here nor there. But in my defense, I did kind of secede the, like, I was like, hey, Matt Ryan stunk against the Patriots. Stunk. <laughs> and then Tannehill comes out and he's like, hey, hold my beer. Um, You're right. You got to see. Absolute I was, yeah. trash. Um, but really, the only thing on my mind this week is is the game that matters, right? It, yeah. it matters more than every other game. It's like, I, I, I yeah, I, I care more about this game than, uh, than a lot of things. I, I just don't want to lose, right? So and a I, lot of things. Yeah, I just it is. That's just like I would love to do five minutes on like where the line is drawn, like the yeah. status of your card shop or Ohio State winning this weekend. Okay, where's Reg on the meter? Yeah. Like, Reg, Reg is at the top, right? But like, yeah, but like, like how far behind is Ohio State? Like, but like, hey, good weekend in the card shop versus an Ohio State win. I take the Ohio State win, not even question. What do you mean close? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, like, I, that, I wasn't. I mean, are we 
It's mm-hmm. not even – I'm telling you. I'm looking you dead in the eyes, and I'm telling you it's not even a debate. Like, I care that much. So but if way, Ohio like, State's won, and we just talked about bring- Georgia to – if Ohio State's one, is the card shop like three or is it 70? No, Reg is one. Then okay. it's like Ohio State football. Then okay, so hard. that's more like, like Alabama. I like Ohio like State very... football more than I like trading cards, for sure. What's the delta between wow. like Reg that's it. and Ohio that's State? it right there. A lot. Yeah, a that's ton. a good point. The Ohio delta State between over Ohio cards. State cards is very, very close. But I'm saying like, hey, 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 like listen to this. I'm dead serious. I would give up. At least, uh, probably most of the national to guarantee Ohio State won a national title and beat Michigan. I'd give it up. That's fair. Also, I'd shout out Reg. Up. Yes, super shout out Reg, and I agree with that because I would do the same. If I, I told gotta... you the Jets could win a Super Bowl, oh, I'd would... I'd kill you. <laughs> <laughs> You're dead. Um, <laughs> viewers or Stroud, collegiate autos long term. Might win the Heisman. Yeah, it uh, Ewers is is raw now, but has a ton of potential. Um, I need to see an Ohio State quarterback do something in the NFL first before I really say, "Hey, long term." Um, but they're both kind of what my, the, I kind of framed it up because they're both going to at least play two more years in college. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a market happen. for that. I think you're going to see Stroud play this year and then next year, then go pro. And I think Ewers and McCord will battle out. Miller will transfer at the end of this year. You'll see McCord and Ewers tra- uh, b- battle it out. But to be honest, I think McCord could transfer at the end of this year because they're going to be like, hey, not going to. Ewers is the backup. He's going to yeah. sit behind him next year. Yeah, I don't, but I don't want to sit another whole year and maybe lose and then transfer. So we'll see. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that I don't want to get too Ohio much into State. college football. We get we get ridiculed when we go too deep into college football. But, so but for real, if you could it's take important one game. auto, Stroud or yours, what are you taking? Stroud. Okay. Really? Right this you? time? Yeah. Because he's like, got a body of work. Exactly. Yeah, I guess that's true. Like, let's just think like what Stroud stinks, could do at yeah. this point. At this point, he's the favorite to win the Heisman. At this point, he could beat Michigan, right? At this point, he could win a national title. Yours, maybe. But I do you guys remember Tate Martell? Was a five star yeah, quarterback. I do. Like was awesome in high school. Didn't do anything. He didn't have. I think the thing with Ewers. How do you say his last name? Quinn Ewers. Ewers. Uh, the, the the thing with that guy is, I think he's very uh, forward thinking in terms of building himself up, which I think is a plays a factor in what we're talking about. But you're right that Stroud's yeah. on field stuff. I feel like Ewers up. has more of what we talk about of the built in long term potential. Yeah. Yep, around his brand and aura than say a Stroud. Yep. So we'll talk more about this in a, a future episode. I know everybody here does not love college football the way we might, um, but I do want to get fifteen into, minutes in. Yeah, fifteen <laughs> minutes in. We did talk about other stuff like Ryan Tannehill and Michael Porter Jr. and some of Tara's hot takes. First mention of cards. Fourteen minutes. Me. Yeah, it should um, really. That's not true. But I do. Uh, we at least got to talk about it. The Luber conversation with the guys over at Sports Card Nonsense, they did an interview with him. Um, Lou asked, hey, did Ryan, did you listen to it? So first off, I did not know you could not listen to podcasts on an airplane. For some reason, I just assumed it was like music. I was like, hey, I'm going to be able to listen to this. But the music I have downloaded, the podcast I did not. So mm. I got on an airplane to Chicago this weekend for the show and was very disappointed when I went to play the podcast. I got like eight minutes in nine minutes in and they're like yeah this doesn't work and, and it i crushed was, you i was ready to listen to it on the way there i heard a lot of people talk about it said it was a good interview and i was like hey i'm ready to listen start listening and then it like stops working so we're gonna have to rely on lou on this i have not listened to it yet oh, but that's I'm tough. going to mm-hmm. so lou i'll let you kind of maybe uh lead that conversation yeah since i was not able to. i i'll say this i'll keep i'll keep it brief i would highly recommend that you listen to the, you the listener um listens to the show sports card nonsense is a great podcast if you don't listen to it already josh is an extremely interesting character to me for a lot of reasons um and it, this is the first time we got to hear his perspective on the card stuff in like an in-depth way which i was interested to hear there was a couple things about how they don't want to overproduce and the big takeaways i think where they don't want to overproduce cards there will not there will most likely not be any fanatics branded cards which i was surprised to hear um and then what was the other thing off when you say, because we they texted briefly of... back and forth, when you say yep. you're surprised to hear that there's no Fanatics branded cards, is that in regards to like when I think about Panini, like Panini 
has Prism. Are yep. you thinking of Fanatics as the similar to Panini? And like, would you I consider am. there to be cards branded as Panini? And that's why you're saying it, you're not sure. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think of it from that way. But yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. I just think that when Fanatics enters any space, what they've done is they've made Fanatics brand. It's like anything else they do. Like they make Fanatics branded T-shirts. They make Fanatics branded cups. Like all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like that was kind of just where they were going to go. It just seemed like the direction of their, like the direction of the Fanatics brand in general. So I kind of just thought that was something to be expected. I do think. I mean, do you think there'll be like Fanatics? I think Panini it has Prism nothing to do with fanatics. fanatics. So I think it has nothing to do with Fanatics. Personally, I could be completely wrong, and hopefully we have the combo with Josh. There's a, a company, Kinetic, that is a holding company that owns Fanatics and a couple other businesses. To my mm -hmm. understanding, this business, Nuco, as you call it, is not part of Kinetic. Is is separate co, to my understanding. Could be wrong. So Nuco is akin to like a Panini. And so when we talk about buying any sort of Panini Optic, Prism, but, but, but on down, whatever those sub brands are, they ladder up into a, a Panini. So mm -hmm. when he says like, we're not going to, Fanatics branding isn't going to be around. I'm like, of course not. Because Fanatics isn't one-to-one -to, -one to Panini. To me, it's like if How some random, not, because, uh, because they're going to be under a different, it's going to be a different brand like there is going to be a brand that sits above like new company new holding company fanatics will sell ish i don't know what the name is, I, is i'm pretty Nuco sure there's a code is word it fanatics it's nuco like luber is an employee to my understanding of nuco nuco is going to create brands and buy brands such so as then so then it was just a miss labeling yeah and i think it out. just helps people because i think everyone in the hobby sees fanatics Big bad big business. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, and it I'm going scary. off of that's what that's what it was. I thought that's what it was. I think that's just largely been because they are fanatics. It's like saying, um, uh, Resi is like Vayner meet X. That's like inside baseball okay. between us. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess it's I guess it's different. I just didn't understand. That changed my whole perspective. I thought fanatics was the brand. If it's a whole different brand entirely, then okay. I think it'll be a whole different brand that is one to one to Panini. So on the back right. of cards, and I think that's why he answered literally, like you're not going to see Fanatics because I don't think that's going to be the brand. But there is going to be new co that's like 2023 new co, you know, Panini. Yep. And then they're going to put out. That's not actually like, the name, right? Isn't there another Opera. name? Opera. No, new co is just co code. Like, when you create a new company, people just say new co. Or, I'm pretty sure they have a okay. code word, but I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, right. So, right. So to f wrap it up again, I would highly recommend everyone listen. I think it's a very interesting conversation. Josh is a very straightforward guy. He's not like a talk around the point guy. That's like not his thing. Um, so it's good to get some direct answers. I think the truth to the matter is he doesn't have all the answers right now. I think they're still working through it. Um, and then the one other thing I would say is that a lot of people who are concerned about specifically us on the show is how they're going to treat hobby shops. And I think they value hobby shops very much. I also think they are going to expand outward. Like he said something about like Wawa having cards, which is very funny. Um, I think that's good too. So I think their plan is to get it into as many locations, whether that's brick and mortar online, whatever uh, as possible. But, and that's obviously an increase in production, which goes against what he said about keeping production low. So I would be interested yeah. to talk to him about that. I was going to say the same yeah. thing. Like that's not really much of a difference than what we have now. There's tar there's cars in Walgreens. It's, it's not. There's cars in Barnes and Noble. There's cars in Meyer, Walmart, Target. Yeah. Barnes and Noble has them here in Columbus. So you can get them at mm -hmm. Barnes and Noble. Like mm -hmm. there are cards all over. Um, so yeah, that's to me, that's not really much of a, a difference than what we already have. Um, I think the thing, the interesting thing is the hobby shops thing, because you mentioned in the interview and what I've heard from a lot of people is it says like, it sounds like Josh is like, Hey, we're pro hobby shop. But like, mm -hmm. it, if you watch the Michael, uh, the, the Ruben interview before it, mm -hmm. that's not what was like, that's not the message that I got from that interview. When you watch that, it was like, Hey, direct to consumer. So it's very interesting to hear, you know, Josh and Michael both say something about it because I watch one of them and I'm like, Hey good luck, get a bot and hope your, your bot's good enough to get some product online. Cause that's what's happening. And then you watch Josh's interview and you're like, Hey, sweet hobby shops to, you know, to the moon. Um, yeah. So I'd I think it's rather different things there. I'd, I'd rather not parse the words of people like Michael Rubin and Josh Luber, 
but I think both are possible. Like you can expand your e-commerce business and expand your e-commerce footprint while right. also keeping the hobby shops in mind and like Agreed. the lifeblood of what cards are. Agreed. All right. Um, so let's get in. Uh, Just real quick on uh, two seconds on that. Nike. When I think about mm -hmm. sneakers, when I think about Air Jordans, when I think about the sneakers app, when I think about their off whites, what have you. There's a aggressive DTC strategy there. Yep. It is also equally, if not more important, that they have retail locations that they do not own in and around, you know, like boutique sneaker shops all over the country that have tier zero or tier one or tier two access that they have direct great relationships with because they know that the culture, the community, so much of that still lives there and that they need to provide those shops to have access because yep. they can't cut them off. And, I, and I, I, I think that that's a good ish way to start to think about it. I agree. I think that's, that's right. That's a good like blueprint for something that fanatics can look to achieve. Yeah. All right. Rye, are you getting into what we're thankful for? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's oh, a couple of different things you. coming up here. I was figuring out with Jay um, how we were going to do them. But um, the one thing is, is I put on Twitter, like, hey, what should we talk about this week? Um, you know, lots to be thankful for. So we've got, we're going to break this into a little two parts. What if people want to get quick opinions on and then uh, what people are thankful for? So he texted them to us if you guys have those. Um, so... Close. Lou, this one's for you because we, okay. you and I are the more uh, interested ones in F1 compared to Tyler. It says F1 not – this is from Holiday Collectibles on IG. It says F1 non-variation Sapphire. A buy or should I only pursue the variation? F1 non-variation Sapphire. Sapphire. You going for just the base or you, are you, is, it, is, the, uh, is, the vari is the variation the only play? You know – it's funny this question comes up. I was literally just thinking about this last night. I was thinking about the variations last night. Uh, wow, that's crazy. What's that person's name? Holiday Collectibles. Shout out Holiday Collectibles. Um, I think I want the variations. I think the just every day that goes by, and I don't want to beat a dead horse too much. I think about F one cards like pretty much every day. So like, um, I, the variations are just so low printed, right? Like, there's just none of them around. And like, I think, what is the Lewis, the regular tops Chrome version of the Lewis variation PSA 10 do like 25, 30 K. I actually have genuinely have no idea. I think it's like something ridiculous like that. It's, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, whatever. I'm pretty sure it's something outrageous like that. So I think these variations are very interesting long-term plays. The question I have, and I think you would know, you would know this better than me. Does a Sapphire base card play the same way a regular base card does? <clears throat> Don't know. The only thing I know about the F1 Sapphire at the moment is like I've been offered a couple of them lately. The PSA 10 Lewis uh, base Sapphire does anywhere from like 13 to 1400 right now. I've mm -hmm. been offered those around like the 1250, 1275 mark. Um, mm -hmm. But I know the variation is much, much bigger in both Sapphire and the, the Topps Chrome. But I don't know. Like, again, I, I would be lying if I told you like, hey, yeah, it's this much difference. I'm just not educated yeah, well yeah, enough yeah. in it. I've been seeing, and this is where you and I are different. Like, and I, I might not be in the minority in the F1 space, but like, I prefer the autographs. Like, I would much rather have a yes. top dynasty encased patch auto than a like SP variation from Chrome PSA 10 that's 25, 30K. That's an awesome card. But I've been going after some more autographs. So I, I've got one coming here soon. I'll share with you guys on the next episode. Um, but wow. yeah, I'm more, much more Jeez. interested in like autographs and stuff like that. I think. I know it's a complete switch of topic and I know we got to move on. No, it's not. It's not really. Yeah, it's a it's a larger F1 conversation. We'll move on. I, Lou. Yes. Top Dynasty F1 patch auto in the four I just to feel six like no range. one cares or, about Dynasty. Or like a variation 10 Sapphire Lewis. Like you buy an Orlando Norris patch auto for five grand or a Lewis Sapphire 10. I'm variation. buying a Lewis. I'm on Ryan's side. I'm buying the land of Norse. I'm on Ryan's side. I, I just think, think what we're seeing, because I think we're seeing it in older basketball, like the wave now. You want an example? I, sure. Yeah, I you know best, but I, I just, yeah. Luca Blue Velocity PSA 10. 
picked it up in Shipshawana in a trade valued at around $2,800 to $2,900. Okay. So this was two weeks ago, two weeks ago, yep. minus a couple, plus, so 16 days. It sold, yes, Sunday, Sunday. So like two weeks after I purchased it, it was in mm-hmm. trade. It sold on eBay for less than $2,200 two weeks okay. later. Okay. That's the whole the whole story? <laughs> yeah, I was looking uh, for a little bit more there. Uh, um, you're saying, you're saying that non-autos have, have more of a tendency to lose Non-autos, value. non-numbered stuff. That stuff is just a lot more volatile. It's not it's, only the base cards that are volatile anymore. It's I don't think just, it's apples to apples with a Lando and a, and a Lewis. I think there's just such a delta between who Lewis is as a human and, and Lando is as a human. That's yeah, that that was my energy. If I was you told me more it's Tyler's point about like we're yeah. seeing it now in the market and going into like non autograph stuff, things like that. I, I think if you're asking school, me like a Hakeem Olajuwon base versus a patch auto right now today, like it's a no brainer. In the moment, people want to collect the thing that people have and like know what they look like and all that and i think long term when you look back like which is more of a piece i think the patch auto is more of a piece yeah i think if you were asking me a lando sapphire versus a lando uh dynasty i would take the dynasty all right i got another good question here this is this one makes you think this is from connor connor malloy 34 on ig better investment 2021 2022 nfl with Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones, Chase, Jamar Chase, etc., or the NBA clash this year with Jalen Green, Cade Cunningham, Evan Mobley, etc. I personally like. Uh, I, I think the NFL class over the current NBA class. Agreed. Aligned. I, Agreed. One hundred percent. I just don't. Who's the biggest name in the NBA class right now? Cade was the number one pick, I think. Cade, Cade probably now, right? Probably who's balling, but he's in Cleveland. Josh Giddy, your boy. There's a serious, there's a serious issue with the NBA and the talent level coming into the league. Everyone's so raw, it's insane. And then, and it takes a couple of years, and and I just think the first, you need like real hype coming in. Like Lamelo Ball is the biggest young player in the league, I think. Yeah, him and Anthony. Am I wrong? And, yeah, and, him and Edwards. Edwards and Am- Edwards largely because he has good bits in press comp. Like he's a great play. Like he's playing his ass off, but people know about him. Yeah, so did because he's so off, did off the Lamelo field Ball stuff. though. Like, hey, well, Lamelo, what's what's going My on? My point is though, like Mobley, I don't even know if I could recognize him, and like Cade Cunningham because he's got the hairdo, but I don't know if his like I agree game. And you need like an NFL has that is my point. Trevor Lawrence, people aren't as interested in how he's performing in his first year because he is. Doesn't that matter. Dude. Chase is performing and is that dude and has had success. And I don't think anyone in the NBA class has awareness, clout, whatever, and backing it up with play. LaMelo, definitely. And so that's why I would take the NFL class over the NBA class 2021, 2022. All right. Another one. So I'm going to, this is kind of a two parter because a lot of these questions are hey, what's the, your thought on the future of at UFC? But Drake's PC asks, why do you think wrestling cards don't get the same love as UFC F1? So again, a lot of these questions, somebody brings up the Vince McMahon one-on-one super factor sells for like nine K. Some people asking about UFC, some people asking about wrestling, just kind of your guys' thoughts on like why one may do better than the other and which future you like better over the next five or 10 years. People hate wrestling and it's bullshit. Frankly, I think it's stupid how much people hate wrestling. And I think that is part of the problem, not the problem. That is part of the challenge with the cards. Wrestling has a very devoted, loyal fan base, but gaining new fans, I think, is really tough, especially younger people. Um, UFC has like such a cool factor associated with it right now that wrestling, pro wrestling does not. And I'm way more of a pro wrestling fan than I am a UFC fan. So I think it's just the cool factor of UFC and combined with that. Yeah, and the, combined with the fact that people just think wrestling's stupid and it's like, I think you're stupid, but yeah. I think it's more of... In the moment, I think F1 and UFC are much hotter. If you look back four months, six months, eight months, and you look forward four months, six months, eight months, I think we're in a more of an F1 UFC market. But I actually think it prevents an opportunity for wrestling based on its history and based on its business foundation. When I hear that about Vince McMahon versus, say, a Lando Norris or a Max, I'm like, I think the Vince is the better play. 
because we get caught so much right now more than anything is noise and we've seen it like i just i i think it's because media is winning in the hot white hot moment for ufc and w and f1 right now ufc just arguably had its best card ever f1 is you know what they've done with netflix and now going into what this season's been but if you look back at vince mcmahon in the past and you think about him in the future I think it's just a in the moment thing. And if you believe in WWE and you're looking for validation from us, I think you should trust your instinct. Yeah. I would also two things on that. Um, number one, I actually believe that Vince McMahon's like one of the top five most important media figures of my life. Agreed. Actually probably like top three. And the other thing I would say, two other things I would say mm-hmm. is one, WWE is having a moment with their talent too. Like WWE, they- not WWE wrestling in general is having a moment with AEW. Like there's just a lot of talent. And a lot of competition who's happening like right the now. Biggest guy. They don't have a right. rock. They don't have a Stone Cold. There they is don't no. Have there is no guy. Undertaker. There is, that. but they're just not. They're just not out there like that because they just don't do a great job of promoting themselves. And then the other thing is WWE specifically, which will always be the number one. Whatever I happen to like AEW more. WWE does not do a great job of letting their stars promote themselves. I think they like were stopping people from streaming on Twitch. It was crazy. Like they weren't letting people do yeah. anything. Real That's quick. Tough. Real quick. Rapid fire. Hit it. Thoughts on the Mac Jones PS10 for two grand? Disgusting. I talked about that on Saturday or Sunday morning on um, Colder Combos. That's disgusting. I think he's a really good quarterback and going to be in the league for a long time and win a lot of games. I think he stinks. Okay. I think he's all limited. Right. All right. Speaking of rapid fire, let's get into uh, – I know Jason, our producers, got a couple ready. Uh, these are from Facebook. Again, if you guys have not checked out the Card Talk Facebook group, make sure you check that out. Yep. This one is from Brandon Cunningham. It says, thoughts on Mountain Dew game, full car- game fuel cards rolling out recently. With as big as esports has gotten and ca- content creation has been, I think these can become very popular. Um, I texted about – I te- I tweeted mm-hmm. about it. I texted you guys about it. I thought it was a good execution by them. It was clearly like a move to just sell cases of game fuel, which is great. That's, that's a good idea. They're going to do what they want to do. But like I think the set has serious potential. Like Dr. Disrespect is – a wildly popular figure in the world. And he only has like a quote unquote, like ultra rare, I think is what they call it. Um, there's courage in there. There's a bunch of people from the CDL in there. So this is the first time CDL athletes have their cards printed out. Um, I was a big fan. I bought a case. I got crushed on my pack. I'm about to cop a hex off eBay right now. Yeah. There's a, he- there's yeah. Hector's in there. Uh, it's all it sold up. out now. So the only place you can get it is on eBay. And I think, you know, there might be someone on the show who got a tough pack. <laughs> I had to throw it in there. That sucks. Uh, I bought six cases. Um, and like Lou mentioned, got a tough pack. I'll uh, see if I can get a video or a picture posted. <laughs> we have it in the thread. We can put it in there. Sent to Jay. Uh, it's bad. This pack is like it it smoked. I haven't even opened it. I'm hoping uh, Mountain Dew can come through with a uh, replacement pack because this thing is smoked. I mean, in like half, like folded. Um <laughs> But yeah, Lou talked about it, looked at the list. Uh, cameraman Brian, my guy, is uh, is into some gaming stuff too. So Key was talking about some of them. He ended up getting a pack and pulled someone decent. I know Lou was talking about it. Um, he ripped his pack. But yeah, it was cool. He gets a Mountain Dew. So, um, Game Fuel's a great drink. You like it? Big fan. Gotcha. So yeah, I, I, thought, it was, I thought it was cool how they were, uh, they, they were doing that. All right, Jay, next right question. Now. My man Hector Rodriguez, that card's a banger. Yeah. If anyone has a courage auto, I want it. All right. So next one, Darren Young says thoughts on unlicensed cards, i.e. Leaf or Tyson Beck cards, PC only or flippable. flippable. I think they're PC only until flip until further notice. Wow. Ty says flippable. Very. I mean, we could do thought. it. We could we could see. So I, my my the reason I say flippable is one. We make up things in our in our head, and then they're easy to follow along, right? Like Panini made that card, therefore it should be validated. Game Fuel made that card; it shouldn't be as validated until someone comes along and validates it, and then, boom, hype, and it goes. We talked about F1 cards, da 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 da, and then the price goes up, and all of a sudden they're legit, right? So the reason I say flippable is because one day they will be like Lou was alluding to. And they might not be flippable right now, but I think that if you're trying, I think there's a story to be told there. I think enough people know Tyson Beck. You just bought the Kobe thing. And I think that it makes more sense that there's upside in those one-off markets 
than not. There was a Twitter argument going back and forth. I think it was my guy Rick about like the card market's down because Luca base is down. And then people think that's a real statement people have. Yeah. And uh I've and heard that. and the the you know the card market is expanding rapidly. We saw it earlier with Marvel. You're talking about getting the Mickey Mouse thing for Reg. Like PSA and grading has allowed for a lot of new things to be considered in the market. Game Fuel, those things have been around McDonald's or whatever, but they've only recently become, I would say, part of the hobby. And so I think they're flippable because right now people don't see it as legit Panini. And I think four years from now, we'll look back and be like, damn, that was a cop. Yeah, to expand on my thought a little bit, I agree with you. I think I'm, I'm using Tyson as the example because that's like the easiest one to to prove out. I, like the other one, I know he did was Deshaun, but that's not a fair comparison. Obviously, he just signed Steph Curry. Just signed Steph Curry. He announced that. I think there was Giannis. He did as well. Yeah, Jason. Um, I would say this. It's like anything else. It's kind of like doing a tops now thing. I saw somebody. There was a an Angels tops now set that they ended up sending over like. Mike Trout autos and Otani autos and Joe Adele autos. And I think someone got the full rainbow of Mike Trout in one order. So like if you're ordering these tops nows or like these drops from a Tyson Beck, I think for the most part, if you get a base card, you should expect not a base card, but like the, whatever the normal release part of that is, you're, you should expect to probably lose money on your purchase overall. I think the Jason Tatum was like 80 bucks when it came out. I just looked it up and the last one did 50. So like that's where that is pricing wise. But if you get an auto, you're going to make money. And then in general, I think a, J- a Tyson Beck, Jason Tatum card is going to look way cooler than a, than a uh, prism Jason Tatum card respectfully to everybody involved. All right. So chance Johnson asks buying it a cam Newton or selling great podcast guys. Keep up the work. Appreciate you. Feels like, feels like a sell. Not a, it's not a buy. It's definitely not a buy. It's definitely not a buy. Shout yeah. out cam. Shout he out knows how cam to make Newton his moments. Six- Shout out to Cam Newton in the six games he's got left in Carolina this year. Yeah. Agreed. And the peak, if I was to buy, I would have wanted to sell when he was coming out of the tunnel yelling, I'm back. This is my team. This is my city. And then it was tied and they lost. Yeah. yeah. Tough, tough for our guy, 14. Yeah. Lost the city after like three months. <laughs> yeah, he did. It's unfortunate. Uh, oh, your point. Way, yeah, he had, I mean. Have you seen him. his stuff? Yeah, it's Sammy, not good. Sammy Diesel? Not good. Not I'm sad, man. Real bad. I'm crushed. It's like I think PSA nine prisms do like ten dollars. I'm unbelievably. You guys wouldn't believe how sad I am about Darnold. Actually, I was I'm, so yeah. in. Nice guy. I've n- never really got like. By grace of God, we were friends. Like I went to su- like I hung out with him, and he was the king. He was the quarterback in New York, and now. I mean, now it sucks. Like, I'm I, actually yeah. so sad about it. I try not to think about it. I just got sad Ever. Just about it. All right, so this is the last one. It says, Lou Corton asks, who do you think has been this year's biggest surprise and who has been the biggest disappointment if you w- if you were to choose one for NFL and NBA as far as value besides Tannehill? So I don't follow basketball closely enough, but the one on paper that seems to stand out the most just based on who was buying them seems to be Kevin Porter Jr. What about Russ West? Don't follow his mark. Again, I just, everybody and their brother was buying Kevin Porter Jr. before the season started for him and Jalen Green in Houston. And Sexton too, right? Yeah, Sexton got hurt. I don't know if KPJ got hurt. That's why I don't know. But I just remember so many people wanting KPJ. And I've sold a couple recently and they don't do super well. So let's go. We each have to do, we'll start with underperformer football, underperformer basketball, one thought, boom, and then over on both. Underperformer football, Baker Mayfield. God. Yeah. I that's the worst take. That might be the worst take I've ever had. I mean, like the Browns have so much talent on paper. The whole Cleveland yeah, Browns the Super Bowl. could be my winner. Uh, for like that. the Eagles when they did that, right? Didn't they put together the Super Squad and then fall apart? Yeah. Yeah, but yep, look shout at that out Namdi Asamo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, got like $10 million Baker would be my underperformer. Play. Who would be your underperformer? In football, In the, my underperformer. And KPJ would be my basketball. My underperformer would be the Jets head coach. <laughs> well, he's looking at me like that. He's doing his best. No, he's not. Bro, we watched seven games where they didn't get a yeah, first down in the first quarter. <laughs> I like, can do this. I can do this for best. hours. I can go on about the Jets for hours. <laughs> I am like macro happy. I'm macro happy. Currently dead. He makes he makes comments 
I love Robert Sala. He makes some comments that, frankly, are so tone deaf, it like boggles my mind. Okay, back on track. Who's your underperformer in football? All right, underperformer in football. I'm I'm looking at I'm trying to like look at names that make myself see how I feel. Russell Wilson is who I will pick. That's, cool. I can get behind that. Injury like was that. a piece of that, but their team stinks. stinks. It's great. Top five pick for the Jets. I feel great about that. They should have been like a Super Bowl contender, and they are nowhere to be found. Stinks. Basketball. <laughs> I'll no start clue. Russell Westbrook because I feel Russell Westbrook. It was like there was like okay, no matter yeah. what, whatever was in the past. Now he's in LA, he's home, he's Braun, he's AD, and he has stunk. And I don't know where yeah, you it just go seems from like here that's... other than like Indiana, like sign a max deal and just ride it out in Indiana. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about basketball, so this might be like completely wrong. I feel like Harden has been disappointing. New rules. He's kind of like new him. rules. His whole it seems like his whole like game has changed. He's only scoring like 19 points a game, and like it's just not the same. It's a good take. Thank you. All right. Who's your most surprising in terms of positive for the NFL and NBA? Dak Prescott. Joe Burrow. They stink. The Bengals are not that bad. They lost to the Jets. They they, the the Bengals have one win that they makes the everyone Raiders? Think that the Raiders really aren't good. good, including me. The Raiders they were at first in the tied for first in the division at one point. The Raiders are good. Yeah, but uh, let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. Like the Bengals Ryan had, had that good. one win. No one really pays attention, so everyone just still thinks that they're good. They then lost to like three awful teams right after the good win, but everyone only remembers the good win. But Burrow is potentially a good call. Um, I, I think Dak Prescott, you nailed it. I'm just going to draft with you there. And then NBA, I might say Devin Booker. Steph Curry. I have no idea. Steph We're back Curry. on I'll basketball. Steph. Yeah, I'll go Steph. Steph's a great call, but the Suns are right there too, balling out. Yeah, they're the hottest team in the NBA. I saw something the other day that I mean, there was mm-hmm. a headline I read, so it's not like a. And they started slow, and everyone was like, all right, that was fun for a couple months that they were good, but they're, they're legit. The Bengals have one good win. Uh, no, yeah, Second straight up division. one good win, and it might, in the Burrow might ride it for 24 months. Second in the toughest division of football. They lost to the Jets, and they so got the blown. So do the Titans. But we, but we agree the Titans aren't that good. That's your whole point. The, the Brown, we agree. The, no, Ryan, that's, that's your point, Rye. All right, sorry, we have to move on. I hate Ryan. Next. I Gosh, these are fun. We'll just take it to Twitter. I hate Ryan. All right. Um, so, Ty, you said the Suns? Devin Booker, specifically. Okay. And you agreed with Lou on Dak? Yeah, I think Dak's doing a really good job coming off injury. The Cowboys elevate things tremendously, and he is their leader right now. And Jason Garrett, I think, just got fired by the Giants, and he's he still doing his thing in Dallas. Um, and they got a real squad. Real quick, on the football note, Burrow is one I love. You know who else we should we didn't talk about at all? Jonathan Justin Taylor. Herbert. Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor, which I have the one of one. If yo Dude. Jay, we should hit that clip. Car Talk Live. What's his, what's my man's name? Chuba Hubbard, who pulled the Jonathan Taylor out of the one of one in Pack Wars. I need to send. It oh yeah, him. I remember that. Yeah. That guy, Jonathan Taylor, is unbelievable. Carson Wentz, sneaky. We didn't talk about. He might be the one that's playing well. Guys got out of Philly and has a good squad. He's fragile. Colts that guy's the king of. He's like if you look at the picture of like mid in the dictionary, it's a picture of Carson Wentz. <laughs> All right, Carson let's Wentz uh, mid. we got to get to pay, play of the week. We uh, we're running out of time here. Uh, Are again, we? play of the week is brought to you by eBay, your number one stop for all things cards and collectibles. Jay, hit us with the plays this week. What do we have? If we're it's being the, honest, though, like this is a big get in the car and drive around week. So I don't think anyone's complaining if we're like an hour and 15 minutes. You know what I mean? You're so right. This is this is a I know, big got to gotta go, run out for like, errands. You're so right. It's a got to run out for errands. You come back four hours later and you did nothing but like just yeah, kind of like, pop by a couple friends house and, yeah. and maybe sat in the parking lot for a little bit. Shout out to the parent, the children of divorced parents. Like you got to drive from house to house. You know what I mean? So right. Lou, All right, this is from smart. Tommy Gems on IG. Submitting a play of the week a few months ago, or a few months back, I bought an Anthony Edwards Prism Raw for about 250 Expressed it to PSA and got it back at 10 
then listed it and sold the card for eighteen fifty on eBay the day I received it. I turned around and bought a Luca Opticolo PSA nine and another Anthony Edwards Silver Prism nine. So I basically got two banger cards on my hit list for four hundred dollars total. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Side mean? note: Anytime we got somebody selling something on eBay, they sell it the same day they get it. <laughs> like this has got to become like the number one stop buying. for all things cards and collectibles. Shipping sold. By... Um, shout out to my man Tommy for uh, listening. I will say. I'll, I'll, I'll make a point. I've listed a lot of things by it now on eBay. The most action I get is the first day I list it. Always. I'm just saying like it's like he's like I got it in the mail. The second I got it, I listed it and it sold. Like, <laughs> it was still a, it was still a PSA. I listed it and it PSA. sold. <laughs> I mean, shout out to a guy a couple weeks ago that had sold the card and then messaged Jay 15 minutes later. He didn't even check pack- it. Was packaging it, listening it to Card Talk. Yeah. <laughs> it still needs to be shipped. <laughs> We recorded the. Sh- we, he made the play. He bought. He got a card. He sold it, and he shipped it before the episode could even come out. Wow! So good. So good. I like this. I, I think Minneapolis is a sneaky city for culture. By the way, I think Anthony Edwards is a real good hooper. Just and the shout out. the Timberwolves with Lori and A Rod have a shot at like kind of being cool and mattering and in a weird way like kansas city matters now and stuff um i i like anthony edwards as a as a hooper for sure for all those reasons i love how funny he is and i like the idea he said i got two banger cards on my hit list that's exactly (laughs) what you want to do i got the two cards i wanted i paid 400 bucks total i'm in great shape yep all right jay next one this is from gts 26 rocks Greg said, play the week submission into the Kyler base prism for $70 flipped for four fifty right before he got hurt. Wanted to sell a peak, which I thought was a few weeks ago. And lucky for me, it worked out. Promoted listing. Are you guys weary? Whenever I see a promoted listing, I'm like, I ain't buying that. I ain't buying that. Yeah. Never done it. To be honest. I've I've never never done done promoting. Have you bought a promoted listing? No. And no, I guess I haven't either, but there's not really a particular reason. Like I blatantly pass over promoted listings because I'm like, oh, this person really is trying to sell this, and I just that rubs me the wrong way. I, I mean, mean, it seems like it might be a way to get a deal, though. If you're willing to pay to, to get rid of it, you might be willing to like. Hey, I was I'm gonna gonna say, gonna it's a good this. point. It's a good point. It's a great. The point. killer in me is like, that's the one you send an <clears throat> offer on. Agreed. I'm you a line flu on this. Yeah. I think you guys are right. I think I'm wrong. I'm not. I think you're right. <laughs> I haven't tell. thought about that spot. I'm always like. Yeah, all right. There's something up with this card. They're trying to promote it. They need to pay more. All right, third one, Jay. I think you're right. It's from uh, Scoo Baca. Mm. Uh, Scott B on IG. He says, what's up, guys? Here's my play of the week. Been into the 5 by 7 cards from Top since I saw Gary talk about how Jumbo slash Box Topper card wow. could gain traction as they are easier to display uh, as an art piece. On wow. June 6th, I picked up an Otani... Five by seven, numbered at a ten for under sixty after shipping. Set it to grading for three hundred, as I was extremely confident it would gem. Wow, uh, and it did. Ended up sending it to consigner and sold an auction for twenty eight twenty seven. Big fan of the pod. Haven't missed an episode. Keep it up. P.S. Tan Hill is a top ten QB. <sighs> Jay, when was this postmarked? Yeah, tough. That was like a Saturday afternoon. Top <laughs> scene on that. Jay submitted Wait, this happened? like three weeks ago. He said. P- PS10 held a top 10 QB. My man. Skubaka. I like a lot about Skubaka. <laughs> I'm literally, I, I just emailed myself and said, buy Tops Update Jumbos. Yeah. So, Ryan, did those come out of boxes or is that like a Tops Now thing? Uh, no, or you have no idea? No idea. No. Because a lot of times they sell these 5x7s these on their website, but it also could be part of like a case hit or something. Yeah. Jumbo cards, are not, jumbo cards are not my thing. They're harder to like get in top loaders. You got to grade them to put them in the better case. Like there's you got to buy there. special ones just for that. Then you got to ship yeah. it. It's like a yeah. whole thing. Yeah. No thanks. Cool card. Good play. Great play. I mean, forty five to twenty eight hundred dollars and unique. Risking three hundred to get a ten. That's that's wild. I mean, obviously uh, he got MVP too, but I don't even think he was announced MVP on October fourth when this sold. So that's a that's a, that's a hell of a play. It is a good not play. For me, a, not for me, but good play. Jemmy. Jemmy. Jemmy did out. 
Yeah. All right, Jay. Uh, this is from Michael Ryan Day. I already like this play, Ryan Day in the no, title. Oh, there. Ryan Day in his name. Got to love that. I knew that was coming. Uh, I thought this was a great move for holding on to the card for under a year and waiting to eventually capitalize on his monster game. Wow. Bought a Jonathan Taylor Pen Pals rookie auto for $13 last December and sold it for $65 after his big game. Do you think that he found this like in his closet, like with all his other cards? And he was like, oh my God, I could sell this today. Or do you think he was purposely like he had it in a top loader, like waiting on his desk? Michael, I love the name, but this was definitely one that was like, oh wow, look what I found. This Jonathan Taylor auto, he had a big day. I'm a fan of that. Those are like my favorite moments when you like find a card. A and it's like, oh, wait. Percent. But part of me want is hoping that he had it like set aside, like ready to go, waiting for the day. I'm going to choose to believe that story. It's a great job. Agreed. I like it Next. though. Any more? Are we done? Could be fast. Uh, no so this is from Trey. <laughs> oh no! He says <laughs> this is the best one ever. He says I bought zero Ryan Tannehill cards. Saved a lot of money by not doing it because he's not a good QB. Oh, no. Get that in a one of those JPEG things. Tyler calls NFTs. Get him one of those and. <laughs> Certify that. That's wild. oh my god. The integrity of play of the week is now dead, but it was worth it for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great job by Craig. Oh man, that's and a good job by by Jay. Yeah. That. <laughs> Whew, that's rich. I was ready to jump on Jay. I saw no picture. That's I was rich. so ready. <laughs> he was ready for it. <laughs> I don't know. That's I, good. I, I got nothing. That's rich. I mean, I, yeah. That's a really good job. For anyone listening, there's just a blank screen. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's literally yeah, blank, man. and it just says, bought Ryan, zero Ryan Tannehill cards, saved a lot of money by not doing it because he is not a good QB. I, I think Gray Worthy has to get a, a um, honorary pass to the Play of the Week club for that. I think possi- he might have. We have to talk about it, though, because that really puts us in danger for the future, but we should talk about it. I don't see him as a winner, but I... So with the with the NFT with the PO app, what people get is they get this this PO app, and then what we have like a one off because you own it. You we have a chat room for those people. We do. Yeah. Can it's I not get live. In the chat? It's not live. It's not live <laughs> yet. It's not that? live yet. It's not live yet. It's not Got live it. yet. Is it a Discord chat? Yet. Nope. It's right in the PO app app. Got it. So if you own one of these NFTs that you get for free, no gas, no nothing you'll get access into the chat room and it'll be us three, Jay, Judy, Matt, our old producer, and then anyone that's ever won a play of the week. Great. And so we got to debate. Gray might get entry into that. Yeah. That was the last one, right, Jay? Review it if so. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. And so in, in spirit of Ohio State's big game this weekend, I'm going with Michael Ryan Day, uh, Jonathan Taylor, Elite Auto. Um, wow. So. Go Bucks. Interesting. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Michael Ryan Day as well. Look at Tyler's face. Why? <laughs> what do you mean why? Tyler, like you, it's you, not you a must, good flip. Like what like you must, you must Ryan, flip. Was, it's like it's like Ty, you must five X almost. You might you must not have ever found a card in your five dollar box. You're like, oh wow, I remember buying this. This is this is a good time yeah, to I mean, on this. Elitist. I have. Elitist I'm just like the reality is like we've like if you go through it every other flip is a better play you just like that his name's ryan day and i respect no. that but like lou wh- where what are you seeing here lou what are you <laughs> seeing in this play that is better than other plays <laughs> so i just want to know i if this wasn't here i'd be picking otani but, but why is this better because i i get i get happy when i think about some jonathan taylor having a big day and he's like all right now is the time i could finally let this go i'm ready to move on from it now i think that's part of it i think that's like it makes it it makes it a it, it's it's just part of the experience of cards understood people will be flipping I, Otani five by sevens for the rest of the time you don't got a lot of pen that's pals not true there's 10 of them and day. we've never seen a jumbo card that was bought raw and then graded and then flipped at a time we're not saying it's markup. like so wait is your so on the swing vote i don't want to be the swing vote though i hate when i'm the side you we're just not swing saying, voted it this is not like ryan you were gonna take it too bad. to be honest this is not extreme we're just saying like I like Ryan. you picked a play because the guy's middle name and i get it it's a big game this weekend <laughs> and so i said okay but Lou, they, 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 like, it's, the I get emotional about it. 
He gets emotional. <laughs> it's like it's just a nice story. Like Jonathan Taylor has a big day. He Man pulls it out of his closet. Card. Man realizes card went up in value. Man sells sells card. Like that's what I think we have here. <laughs> I think you you're being a, you're happened, being though. you're really putting me down, and like I don't appreciate it. I'm just trying to, you know, keep. I mean, I got buried with like a fake play of the week at the end. I'm just trying to keep some integrity around here. <laughs> Ryan, you know, just said I like the guy's middle name, so I'm going to give him play of the week. And I'm just trying to hold the line here to like realize. You know, what? You're, right. You're, right. you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. The integrity of play of the week is important. I'm going Otani. What a soft. I mean, dude, my man Lou can be persuaded for nothing. No, that's that's the integrity. It's right. Jason's you, already ruined it. You said his name's Ryan Day, so you gave him play of the week. Like I don't Jason, want to look back on that. Jason opened Pandora's box with the blank screen, he, he and we did. have to we have to bring we have to reel it back in. I'm going Otani. It's a play. When you see a jumbo five by seven, yeah, you raw, know what? You're right. It's the better play. I mean, I'm sorry, Jenny Michael did. Ryan. Day. Well, I I'm apologize. So disappointed. My man, and he's he's a Michigan family. He's not going to go with you this week. What are you he just with? did. Until he realized. Until you started to like say, hey, maybe Ryan Tano's not that bad. Please pick this one. Thank you. Listen, Jonathan Ryan. Taylor is one of the best running backs in the history of college football. And he played for Ryan's not rival or just <laughs> yeah. another a conference team, another team in the conference. <laughs> Everyone knows Wisconsin's irrelevant. Hey, Wisconsin might go. I mean, 10, this is like a, the all time top tier play of the week play right here. Yeah. Well, the, the other part you're not considering is that. I'm on a mission to to reset the, I know, the narrative on Otani. So. You are. I wasn't saying you had to go Otani. There's a couple other plays here, but my no. The obvious choice is Otani. Like, I own a lot of cards. One of my cards had a good day, and so I flipped it for like three X. I great. like I like walking into my closet and seeing like all these random cards and being like, oh, I could sell this one. I like that. Ty, like, don't take that away from me. I'm you want just, just let just take hold it. The He's just not great. used to that. He's just like, hey, done. I have all these cards. I'm, I'm, all, I'm off. ADX. Ryan, you won. Let's move on. His middle name. Real quick. Shout out Scubaca. That's all we got for play of the week. So shout out to Scubaca for taking the win. Scubaca. Real, real talk though. Jonathan Taylor for MVP. I, you can make the argument. There's not like a runaway MVP he's, right now. He's that good right now. Yeah, he's got over eleven. He's the leading yards, rusher in the NFL. Thirteen touchdown. Thirteen touchdowns. He's so good. He had five touchdowns yesterday on Sunday. <laughs> he buried the Jets, right? Uh, ate us alive from what I remember. Yeah. And another thing while we're on the topic of the NFL, we, well, we got to be fair here. We had a lot of talk about the Chiefs panic meter. Chiefs panic meters definitely calmed down. What about the Bills panic? Oh. They stink. I told you that. The quarterback they, stinks. We have to go. The quarterback stinks. He stinks. He's always been bad since day one, and he showed it again last Sunday. He's bad. They're going to get thrown out of the playoffs in the first round. Mark it down. They you've stink. Been, you've you've been adamant about it. I probably have they a couple stink. clips that praise them a little bit too much. Do you They're know bad. who's Do you know who's leading the AFC East? Yeah, congratulations on winning the worst division in the NFL. That quarterback stinks too, and they'll get bounced early too. Just saying. They're gonna get bounced too. They Jay, stink. we need these clips on Thanksgiving. On the Jets are gonna win seven games. Zach Wilson could. for MVP. Bang! My new iPhone just got delivered. I'll let you, boy. There will be no such clips. Thank you, Jay. All right. What are we thankful for? I'm going to pull them myself. I'm going to uh, clip them. And I'll tag you guys on Twitter. We'll get them pulled. Hey, if anybody, like, sh- side note, if anybody in here can pull those clips, this is a Jets-only run podcast. So if anybody on true. Twitter has any of those clips and would love to pull Tyler or Lou talking about the Jets winning eight or nine games, Zach Wilson for rookie of the year. It's 150 I degrees in this love, room. Would love yeah, to get yeah, those. I definitely got the old pit sweats going. I'm sweating. Can we get out of here? <laughs> um right. wait, but we have a thank we we gotta be thankful for things. Oh yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Are we doing so, real thankful or like cards thankful? Uh, like I'm thankful for Ryan. Cards thankful. Cards thankful. (laughs) I'm thankful. I'll go first. I'm thankful to F1 for introducing me to a new sport that I actually really enjoy. And I'm thankful that I was able to get on some of the cards early before they got out of price range for me. And I was able to have some stuff I can hold on to. So shout out to graves.21 on IG said the pod 100% is what he's thankful for women of the hobby. Our girl, Sam said in-person card shows. Um, Cooper Price said the most 
the mostly positive community that cards brings uh, to the moon collectibles said that they held the national year best trip this year by far. Um, Jay caster 27 said thankful for all the advancements in the hobby te- card technology. Um, Recon sports cards said all the great friends I've made that I speak with daily, weekly at minimum breaking news. Uh, Heartland hustle said, uh, Ryan Tannehill ranked as the 10th best quarterback in the NFL is what he's thankful for. Um, breaking news. What breaking news? You're on mute for breaking news. Remember the thing we were talking about yesterday? Maybe. The 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 thing I said I had to reach out to somebody about? We just talked about it today again. The gold. Oh yeah. Just got the just got the message. We're locked in. We're 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 rolling. Lou's locked in. That's what Lou's thankful for. I'm fucking up. Lou's thankful for a deal, a pretty Thanksgiving deal. Um Somebody said, uh, Dunks Unlimited said, retail becoming more accessible. Um, KTT Cards said, PSA incoming price drop. Um, Cards Gilmore said, Ryan Tannehill throwing four picks. Got to throw that in there. Um, Somebody said, Secret Dojo said, PSA 7s. MVMEE710 said, Card Ladder. Um, And then Caffeine and Cardboard, this is a good one. The opportunity to escape the rat race of the corporate world and live a life fueled by passion. Shout out to Tyler on this one. Uh, Hope M13 said NFTs, new knowledge, new people, new experiences. So they're just a couple of the ones that we got from listeners. I'm going to piggyback off of that one um, back into cards because I feel that way about kind of the hobby and the people that I've met in it. And the relationships that have formed and the things that I've learned by proxy of going to shows and buying and selling cards and understanding markets and why all the things, sudden things take off and whatnot. I'm also very largely of one, the people that support this show, that leave comments of positive nature that are active on Twitter, because I've come to realize as someone that now is running a you know, media company has 45 people on the team and like we put out content, I am overtly sensitive to negative feedback and it fucks me up badly. Um, And I'm, I can understand it when it comes from a constructive criticism place of like, Hey, this, this, this. And I think you guys should think about this. And I've been able to have great conversations in that regard. I'm really close to someone that started off by saying like, this is why I don't appreciate what you guys do. And we talked it out and I've learned from that, but then there's generally just people that just dislike and that messes me up. So I'm very thankful for anyone that has watched this, enjoyed it, left a comment because I really like it and I want to keep doing it. But I'm also aware that it messes my day up when someone just tweets at Ryan, why'd you do a show with these two characters? They'd bring nothing for you. And I'm like, fuck that guy. That fucked me up. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, wait, 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 loser. And another wait, homie came wait. and responded to him and was like, "Why? Why you gotta do that?" Now wait, I don't need wait, to put wait. any of that on blast. This is about being thankful. I'm just being open that I appreciate everyone. That if you enjoy our stuff, giving a little love. I can't even love. read it. And you're unable to read this tweet. I must be blocked. On limits, who, yeah, who that can dude's view a hater, their tweets. bro. Probably that dude's a hater. So that's that. I don't um, even know who it was. And I'm excited. I haven't been this excited about Thanksgiving in a really long time, if I'm being honest. I don't know why. I'm not a Thanksgiving guy. I'm ready to just, like, chill. Yeah. I do think everybody needs to chill for a little bit. I think everyone deserves it. Lou and I talked about that before we started. (laughs) Well, chill. Um, Definitely thankful, first and foremost, for Jason and Judy for doing all the hard work. Tyler and Lou and I just... Guys, I did a cards one. I thought we weren't doing a serious one. Oh, my God. Ryan, I mean, he is. Tyler and Luna, I keep going, Ryan. Talk shit about each other and Tyler's <laughs> terrible takes all day. That's that's a new type of episode, by the way. Tyler's terrible takes. We're starting that up, getting that on t-shirts. Um, <laughs> definitely excited or definitely thankful for that. Thankful for Ohio State football for sure. Um, and then, yeah, Tyler and Lou for sure, right? For letting me uh, talk them and annoy them, you know, once a week for. 75 weeks at this point now so shout out to uh shout out to them 
my god yeah i mean listen i'll do a serious one as well of course you guys know i'm very thankful for you guys i love talking about cards every single week and i wouldn't have anywhere else to do it i was just talking to sasha about that yesterday actually um i'm very thankful for you guys i'm very thankful to judy i'm extremely thankful to jason i give him a lot of shit but he's a good dude and works very very hard i'm a big big fan of jason and i'm, I'm thankful to the listeners yeah, shout out to the listeners for sure. Yeah. YouTube, honestly, Wednesdays in the YouTube comment is like, yep. I'm peak happiness for me. When I get on the couch at night and I read all the comments, my favorite thing. And I just laugh and then just banter and bullshit with people. Yep. It's a blast. Yep. So I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving. Thank you for tuning in and uh, have, have a good couple days. Enjoy it. Peace. See, See you guys. guys.